Hi, it's Andy at MN Moto. Today I'm in a parking lot in Chaska, Minnesota, going for a quick ride. I have a couple of things I want to accomplish today. One is I'm going to shake down my clutch and uh, see if it's still slipping. I started slipping on a ride last Wednesday. And the other is I'm going to try to get a couple of, of uh, drive-by shots for my channel. <laughs> So the clutch is right here, obviously, on the left side. There is a adjustment screw here. You just loosen up this lock nut, adjust this to make this tighter and looser to give it more or less travel. And that's how you adjust your clutch lever. So as you can tell right now, if I go like this and you look at this gap right here, there's just a tiny bit of play there before there was no play there, it was like a rock. You couldn't, I could bounce my fingers off the clutch. So I think what was happening is let the clutch out and it wasn't letting out all the way, so the spring wasn't completely catching. Because it would, it would uh, keep revving and not accelerate in the top gears at high RPMs. And I hear that's a, a sign of uh, your, your friction plates going out and your springs getting weaker. Uh, but with a clutch adjustment, sometimes you're able to get some more life out of it before you need to replace it. Because I really do not want to have to take this this is a clutch on this side i do not want to have to take this clutch out to take all the the plates out and put in new friction plates this is where the, the other end of that clutch cable goes um, you can see the cable there if that cable stretches to the point where both adjustments are showing really wide that's usually a sign that a cable stretched um, i think it was just because i put these different bars on and with a little bit of different rerouting um, it tightened it up just a hair and uh and that was doing it i'm hoping that's the case if not i will have to do a, a clutch spring and um, probably like a barnett or with an edc clutch upgrade um, to my friction plates and i'm hoping that's not the case so anyhow let's go for a ride all right guys while i am getting going here um wanted to thank you all for checking out my channel i know i'm just starting out and learning all the little tricks and stuff and i uh, haven't come up with too much to talk about yet but getting to know you guys i'm enjoying it i'm becoming part of the community and if you like my channel please subscribe if you like my video please give me a thumbs up if you think other people may like the video please share with your friends and if you want to know when new videos come out for me hit that bell icon because that is how you'll know from all of your videos you're subscribed to that mine are coming out here we go So my goal here, as I said earlier, my goal here is to see if I got the clutch adjusted correctly. And the best way to do that is to warm it up. I mean, as far as lugging from a start, well, thanks, dude. It wasn't like I was trying to get out of here. So first thing you do is you, you shift up an extra gear or two. And I've got no problem in you know lugging from the low side. Not an issue whatsoever. It's more when I get up to like fifth gear, if I drop into fifth gear at like 50 miles an hour and gun it, it just revs. And it, it used to still like fifth gear was like first you know you'd shift in 50 and gun it and you would just go <laughs> but as you can tell with my tires which also are getting really really worn clutch and tires both 
I, I've put 6,000 miles on this bike by myself in like three or four years, which isn't a lot, right? It's just summers, you know, one ride a week, something like that. Haven't gone any big trips or anything. And I burnt through a, a new, I put a new back tire on last year. And this year, <laughs> I've been having so much fun just hot rodding around. That was neutral. seems to be engaged better like when I, I let off it, it grips better and that's another thing too is I do a lot of engine braking so I don't know if that contributes but I'm sure like hot rodding and by hot rodding I mean like you're taking off from a light and you just bang through all the gears as hard as you can and that, that's how it would be with my friends ride like we'll have a big group and we'll all just go from zero to hundred in four seconds So between hot rodding and engine braking and city riding a lot, like not going on long trips, like I'm always just banging through the gears. Um, I've gone through a back tire. I've worn my front tire from looking really good down to nothing. And I burnt out the, well I didn't burn out the clutch, but I think the clutch is getting pretty wore out. So you add up two tires and a clutch and an oil change and plugs and filters and everything in the spring, I may be looking at a pretty big maintenance bill, like 600 bucks. That's pretty good. That was just fourth gear, up to 50, no problem. Um, so you add that maintenance bill, you know, the bike has dropped in value. I've got it for 4,500 bucks, which it was probably about a thousand bucks off four years ago. So I was like, oh, I could ride this for a couple of years, sell it, and you know, it have barely cost me anything. Well, the problem with that is I kept it a couple extra years, and now I've lost a grand. So I've now I'm down to like $3,500 value on this thing, which is fine. That's still pretty good for having a bike for that long, only losing a thousand bucks. Um, but then you add that $600 worth of maintenance on there, and then you're looking. It's like, okay, it's a $3,000 bike. Do I want to put? 600 bucks into a three thousand dollar bike and have a bike that's still good again for another four years which will be worthless when i'm done with it but at least it'll be like good and rideable and better than a lot of carbureted older early 2000 bikes out there for the same price or do i get my three grand out of it and put that down on bigger better faster stronger um, i prefer to do the latter the problem is to get an upgrade from this bike, I'm not, it's not going to be $3,000, I'll tell you that right now. Um, I'm looking probably in that $7,500 to $10,000 range. And in that range, you would think that'd be plenty, um, but I have, I'd have to stay in the Metro Cruiser. I, like to go to a Harley, I'd have to spend $10,000 for a Harley the same as this, like an 08 fuel injected. I mean, obviously, it would be a bigger motor. It'd be like a 1600 over 1300. It would, you know, there'd be there'd be a definite improvement. I'm not saying it's the same bike. Um, yeah, because otherwise, you know, you spend five, six grand, you're going to end up with an 04 with 40,000 miles on it, carb carbureted. This does not make sense to me. at all anyway long story short I was hoping to go on this road so I could wind out the freaking clutch and now I haven't been able to get to a point where I can do that so I mean, it doesn't feel like it's, it's slipping to me at all You have to Highway 5 and just rip it into the Victoria and see what happens here. Because we go two miles to just rev the shit out of it. So anyway, that was probably too much information. Uh, 
obviously really like my V-Star. This thing's been awesome. Um, nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's just maintenance, regular maintenance, stuff that anybody would have to do. Um, I would obviously disclose the tire wear and, you know, the, the, you need to adjust it here and there to keep it going um, to whoever buys it. So I'm not going to hide anything. And like I said, I would adjust the price accordingly. Um, yeah, it's just whether or not I put 20% of the bike back into it for maintenance. I mean, it's kind of like a car. If you had a car that was had 100,000 miles, it's 10 years old, and you started noticing stuff, you know it's a tip of the iceberg. You're like, oh, I've got the $10,000 car, and it needs two grand worth of work. You know, what, what, what am I going to do? Well, the obvious thing is, is trade the thing in, get something nicer, and not have to worry about it. But this isn't my everyday transportation either. I mean, 100,000 mile, $10,000 sports car that you play with on the weekends is fine. But that, I don't know. I'm just backing for it. It's a lot of money for something I use once a week. So for now, I'm just going to ride it on the tires because they aren't aged or showing threads. I'm going to try to adjust the clutch the best I can until it really starts slipping. And I'm just going to keep having fun. But in the back of my mind, in the corner of my mind sits a jukebox playing all my favorite memories. Oh, now they adjusted it. It's a little different. Where it engages. Well, I'm back up to 90 and fourth gear again. So. The, la the last time I did that, fourth gear was not 90 miles an hour it was like 40 and then it wound up to 70 and fifth which is not what I'm used to so hitting hit 90 and fourth gear and having to stop before I get arrested that's that's back to where it should be I think it was just a clutch adjustment at least now, I mean I haven't warmed it I've only been riding it for 20 minutes which should be fully warmed up um, you would think right Anki Brewing. I'll do a destination showcase at Anki if uh, you know if they want to sponsor me. Microbrew tour. Would you guys be interested in microbrew brew tour? It's another one of my favorite things. There's about six of them within half an hour from my house. Yeah, it seems to be taking off pretty good. I mean, it's still... Still sends me back my seat at 65, so... I had it, I kind of adjusted it towards the end of the throw to release at the end of the throw more when I was just kind of getting used to it so that it wouldn't jump when I let it out. But that would be the beginning of the throw, I don't know. All right, well, I'm comfortable with the clutch situation. I, I think it was just a crazy day of keeping up with the friends and just running it hard and felt something that was a little off made me think about it all week. I'll keep you posted though. You 
it so I can turn around in this place. Bird sculpture. I can't tell you guys how excited I am that the clutch is working correctly. Um, seriously, like, lo not losing sleep, <laughs> but just in a funk the last couple days about this clutch situation. waiting for it. <clears throat> Downshifting, good topic. Uh, how often do you guys engine brake downshifting? Uh, do you do it every time you come up to a stop sign or slow down like I do? Or do you usually coast to save your transmission? Um, like, like here, slowing down. I mean, I just do it as I'm slowing down, so it's not like it's a lot of stress on it. And then that way, I know I'm in the right gear when I start taking off on this sand right here. So this Yamaha, if you drop it down into a gear and it's not the right speed, it's going to make for something really interesting. It's either going to slow you down to like it jerks or you're going to bog or it's going to try to push you out of the corner like that into the, yeah, you know, out of the, out of the corner. So I like to know what, you know, have the engine and the, and the gear match as, you know, whenever possible. And that, that's one thing that, um, engine braking helps me with that. And it just helps me slow down faster. I just kind of like that feel. Uh, kind of like these new electric motorcycles, you have an option whether to have the the regenerative braking that helps recharge the battery and, and so when you let off it's like a motor there's drag on it or free where when you let off it's like a you know a scooter or golf cart you an automatic transmission you just float. Um, I prefer to have a little bit of drag when I let off so I get a little more control and like I said match the speed of the engine to the transmission for when I get back into the throttle. Um, but anyway, that was a lot of what I think. I want to know what you think. Comment below about how often you engine brake and in what situations. Very curious. Maybe I can, we can learn something from each other. All right, guys, I'm back home now and I uh, just wanted to wrap this up by saying thank you and if you uh, like what you're seeing hit the subscribe button uh, if you like the video hit like if you want it more content hit that bell notification and uh, if you think you have a friend that might like this please share again this is andy from mn moto okay.